Hi, welcome to my tutorial series Guitar Technique Exercises. My name is Markus Fleischer. In this video I want to give you three exercises that will help you to develop a perfect right hand picking technique. I know what you're thinking. Three exercises to develop a perfect right hand technique? What is a perfect right hand technique? There are a zillion ways of picking strings with a pick. There are different picks, small picks, big picks, thin, thick, pointy ones, round ones. There are a zillion ways of holding the pick and how can there be a perfect way? Of course, there's not one perfect way of doing it. But let's look at our guitar idols across all the genres of guitar music. They have all found their own perfect way of doing it. And although they found perfection at times totally different ways of doing it and holding the pick and totally different ways of strumming, they all have three main things in common. First of all, they found a natural way for themselves of doing it. You know, if you're a touring musician, you're on stage for hours every night or in the studio, you have to find a natural way of doing it. Otherwise, you will not survive this job. They are really not absorbed with playing the guitar. They are there for the audience and the music. So you can only do that if you developed a natural technique and especially a natural way of hitting the string. Second of all, they all have great sound. You know, there's not one artist you love where you think great compositions great melodic ideas, great rhythm, but the sound is not good. They all have good sound and a good sound really has a lot to do, of course, with the way you hit the strings. And the third thing is they are all fluent in their musical language, in their musical genre. And that has also a lot to do with the right hand technique. Different genres need different techniques like sweet picking or alternate picking or hybrid picking and they can do everything they need to do in their music. So those are the three main aspects that they all have in common and the outcome how they pick is totally different. So let's look at three case studies. First case is Ingve Malmsteen. He has a perfect right hand technique. It's a beauty to watch and to listen to. You should really check it out, some videos. It's just wonderful. If you see him pick, it's totally economical. It looks very relaxed. He's on stage and can do his whole rock show and not skip a beat. If you look closely at his right hand, you will see that he is holding the pick mainly between his thumb and his index finger and there's very little pick sticking out and he's angling the pick and he's picking pretty lightly I would say. He has a nice way of circling around the strings, very economic way. He's not wasting too much energy in his right hand and it's just perfect. But you have to see his right hand picking technique in a whole system and in a whole musical genre. His genre requires of him to do alternate picking and sweet picking. His sound relies on amplification. He has full stacks um, turned up very loud. So the air moving part comes through the speakers a lot of his amplifiers and not so much from picking the string. When you're into the music of, let's say, Django Reinhardt, you like people like Stocholo Rosenberg or Joshua Stefan, that's a completely different thing. They have an acoustic guitar and the whole moving air thing is coming through hitting the strings and hitting them hard. So you're there with an acoustic guitar with thicker strings. You may be in a smaller room and you have to fill the whole room with your acoustic sound. In order to do this, you cannot have a picking technique that is very light. You have to hit the strings a lot harder. So 
when you observe them, you will see they have a hand position that is more based on a closed fist. And the pick is more in the fist because they want to put some weight into the sound. They have the guitar much higher and they have more arm movement, a lot of down strokes and rest strokes. And they want to put a lot of energy into the strings so they can project with their guitar. But this way of doing it will not help you if you're, let's say, a country player like Danny Gatton. Because when you have this closed fist position and you want to do a lot of hybrid picking, um, that will not help you as your default hand position. So three examples, they are all perfect, they are all completely different. So what does that mean for us? We have to develop a right hand technique that is natural truss that will produce the sound we have in our head and that will help us to speak fluently in the musical language that we are talking in. In my case I had a wonderful right hand technique but um, when I studied jazz guitar in Amsterdam I was totally heavily into Pat Metheny. And he has a very special way of holding the pick. I will show you. He's doing it like this. He's holding the pick between thumb and middle finger and index finger. And he's playing with a round side, with this round side of the pick. And he's picking like this. At least that's what I discovered with the video material I had back then. And I thought that sounded so beautiful and I wanted to imitate that um, sound. I wanted to try out if that's maybe a good way for me to, of doing it. And I changed my whole way of holding the pick like this to this. And I managed to really um, make the change. and. <laughs> And I liked it a lot. It sounded great. I could do some things that I couldn't do with my usual way of holding the pick. My phrasing was different. I had different musical ideas coming out. I loved it. But when I was on stage, somehow I got aware of my right hand while I was playing. And that is something you don't want to have. You don't want to think about the right hand while being on stage and executing music. It's like thinking about your feet while walking. It's like I go re left, right, left, right. No, no, no. You don't want to think about your right hand. I was thinking about this. What is this? Sure, you have to do some more work of holding the pick like this, but it's, it's not like big, it's not like shoveling snow or working in a coal mine, it's only playing guitar. I thought I have to practice more, it's an athletic part of the whole thing and I will push through. And I was practicing like a madman, like a maniac in those days. And after a long practice session with uh, this technique, I was sitting there like this. And I was observing my right hand and I thought, well, this is how my right hand is in a natural position, just hanging there, fingers around, you know, there's no tension in my hand. And I was started to compare this with my picking technique and I noticed, well, because those fingers are in my fist while picking, I have some extra tension here. So I re released those fingers and played like this. That felt better. And then I noticed, well, still this part of the hand is always tense while playing it. It's because I have to straighten the thumb here. So I tried to loosen that and I tried to compare it with this hand position. So I managed to do that, but at the end I stopped playing in this technique because I noticed I always have to have my hand actively in a straight position here. I always have a, a tension here in this part of the hand that's translating th 
through my whole arm. And I thought that cannot be good. So I went back to playing like this. And this is for me, Marcus Fleischer, the most natural way of picking the string. This is the first exercise, actually. What you have to do is just, you know, this is it. There you are, this is your body. After practicing maybe for a longer time in the right hand technique that you have, you just relax and let your right hand, you know, dangle down and just observe. How does that feel? How is your right, how is your natural right hand position? Compare that to your right hand picking technique. And you might discover, wow, I'm really tense. Maybe you're saying, yeah, yeah, I, this is way more relaxed than my usual hand position, but there's no other way of doing it because maybe you're in a band that's playing power chords, a palm muted very fast. So this is your hand position. It will not be this hand position. Okay, that's fine, but observe if, if there's something that you can improve when you compare your natural relaxed hand position with your playing position that you have usually. You can also just do this to relax your hand and to detect some tensions in your hand that you have so you can get rid of them. Try to get a break to relax your hand once in a while and to observe to get a neutral way of seeing your hand again and to feel how the hand feels relaxed and try to bring something of that relaxedness into your uh, right hand technique. With this second exercise let's look at the strumming movement you're doing. You dampen your strings with the left hand and you just strum all the strings. And you try to do a movement that is relying on gravity. Just let your arm fall down through the strings. If you're strumming like this, you will notice that there are several parts of the arm participating in this movement. You have a wrist action like this, but also the arm is rotating a little bit. The forearm is doing a movement like this and even your finger, the thumb and the index finger is moving a little bit. And this movement translates, if you're doing it really loose and relaxed, is going up the whole arm into your shoulder. The whole right side of your body is moving a little bit. That's a good thing because you want to have a natural movement where lots of joints in your body are involved. And that will make good sound. How about trying to have the same movement just in small when you're only playing one string? It should be the same movement just smaller. So you can practice that. You hit all the strings and then you go to hitting one string and back all the strings, one string. And try to have the same feeling, the same feeling in the whole arm when you're only picking one string, that it's not all of a sudden, just a movement from your wrist. No, no, no. The whole arm should be involved in this. And maybe that's not the way you can pick in your music, but it's a good exercise for observing how a natural movement can be. Treat the strings like it was a drum. This third exercise is about developing speed with your right hand. Of course, we guitar players, we want to be fast on the guitar and it's a lot of fun and it's also a good way to be fluent on your instrument and to be accurate 
while playing so it's good to develop some speed. While you're doing this tremolo picking you observe your right hand how the angle is of your right hand how the pos hand position has to be so this tremolo picking can be as smoothly and fluently as possible. So this for me this is the best right hand position and angle of pick. Let me change that and you will see if I do it like this I get caught up in the string. So I have to angle my pick a little bit. If I'm too much like this it's not working anymore. Also I notice again that it's training my hand so this is a good angle. If I do it like this you will notice that the rhythm is off. So I'm, I'm not as regular in the, in the up and down. Um, it's not as fluent. So this is a wonderful exercise to observe your right hand and to learn what your right hand wants so that it can move up and down in the fastest way. So again, that might not be the hand position you're used to playing in or it's not the hand position you can do everything in, but you can learn from that. That if you play like this all the time and you wonder, hmm, I'm not as fast as I could be maybe, maybe it's because you have to change the angle and to, you can experience this with this tremolo picking exercise. At the end of this video, I want to share some thoughts about this right hand picking development and how important I think it is. Maybe you experience that, you know, when you're playing at home, you feel like everything's cool, everything sounds good. You know, you're the guitar world champion at home. But as soon as you play in front of people on stage or for somebody, it's not working out so good. And that can have a lot of reasons. Um, maybe you think, hey, I'm a little nervous, maybe. But, you know, everybody's nervous playing in front of people. And you should be open to the idea that it can be, for instance, your right hand because you have a way of dealing with the right hand that is not helping you in a situation where you want to focus totally on the music and you're a special situation, other people are looking at you. Also, you might have the experience that your timing is not cool. You're playing in a band and it's hard for you to play pocket you know, to really groove with the people and you think, well, the solution is I have to practice more with the metronome. It could be the solution, but sometimes the timing in your head is perfect. It's just your execution with the right hand is not good. The signals coming from your brain are not coming out at the correct time or not fluently because the translation of the signal to the strings with your right hand is not working. Concerning sound, you know, we are all buying different, you know, <laughs> distortion pedals and we try out different strings and pickups and it's fun. Uh, and I like to do that myself. And it's also an important part of um, finding your sound and being comfortable with your sound. But everybody says the sound is coming from your fingers and don't forget the way you're hitting the strings is really a big part of your sound. How do you want the string to sound when you hit the string without an amplifier or a distortion pedal? Just, just you know, turn off everything and is that the sound you want to get just from the string and your pick and your hand and your fingers? Or does that already result in something that is not um, the way you hear it in your head? So you don't have to search for other pedals or stuff. It's really about your right hand. Of course, 
we see all those videos on YouTube and people showing you how to sweep pick and do this and do that. We are all tempted to do all those exercises, but maybe you're a blues player and your music does not require sweep picking. Maybe it doesn't require alternate picking. Maybe it requires good, solid, good sounding downstrokes because a downstroke sounds like a downstroke and that's the uh, thing your music needs. That's fine actually and you can find uh, the most natural way of doing downstrokes and how to hit those downstrokes and you can say yeah I, I, I cannot do upstrokes or sweep picking if I hold my pick uh, in a certain way but maybe you don't need this so that's fine too. If you're a guy who does a lot of sweep picking, you have to change that whole thing. Maybe you cannot get this cool blue sound out of your guitar because you have to have a low action and you have to pick lightly. That might be a whole different um, set of uh, parameters. Or maybe if you're doing a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs and you hit the string hard, the a picked string will always be a lot louder in comparison to the hammer-ons and the pull-offs. So you will not sound fluid in this. You have to adjust your right hand to the volume of your, um, of your legato style stuff you're doing. So this you get a nice uh, even phrasing and even articulation. So this is a whole different set of requirements. But still, having said that, you always have to find a natural way and you have to always observe if the way you're doing it is still relaxed, is, um, are you tensing up anything. And those three exercises will help you finding your way, your perfect right hand technique and stick to it, do it regularly, observe your right hand and don't stop. Just continue doing it for your whole career, your whole guitar playing life. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my uh, left hand technique exercises on my YouTube channel. There's a lot of stuff you can discover there and if you put the right hand and the left hand together you have a wonderful technique. Take care and goodbye.